hardest. How now, Brown? <laughs> oh, well, it is dreadful. Darling, maybe you've been working too hard. Or I know what it is. That race, the bump on your head. No. Yeah, that, that race did make me pretty hard. <laughs> How do you feel? Fine. He <laughs> talk. Wilbur, you're going to bed. No, no. Come with me. You can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Wilbur, you're going straight to bed. I'm not sick. All I want you to do is hear the horse talk. Well, give him a dime, send him down to the drugstore and have him phone me. Be stubborn. But I'll prove it. Somehow I'll prove it. Wilbur! Oh, hey, Pope, are you getting settled all right? Anything we can do? Hey, Mr. Bagby, you've lived around here a long time, haven't you? Ever since I got married, 16 years. Well, then maybe you can help me convince my wife of something she's a little reluctant to accept. Not, not that she's unreasonable. It's just that... Well, you know how illogical wives can be. For 16 years. Yeah. Now, Mr. Oldfield, the, the man we bought the house from, uh, you were a friend of him. Oh, yes. Very friendly? Very friendly. Did you exchange confidences with each other? Oh, sure. No secrets between us. Did he ever say anything to you about his horse? Well, what about his horse? Did he ever tell you that his horse can talk? Oh, no. Oldfield used to say a lot of funny things, but... <laughs> He never said anything about his horse talking, huh? No. Did the horse ever say anything? The horse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did <laughs> well, the horse ever say anything to you? Yes. Yeah. That's what I thought you could help me prove to my wife. Oh. Well, I'm kind of busy right now, Mr. Pope, so if you'll excuse me, I've got to go inside. Door, I've got the lock. <laughs> oh, say, Larry. Say, Larry. There's something I want to ask you. Is you a... me up, my own wife, my own neighbors. I, I tell them you can talk and they all think I'm crazy. Well, that figures. If I told other horses I was talking to a man, they'd think I was crazy. Hey, you right, old fella. Stop calling me old fella. My name's Ed. All right. So we'll call you Ed, the uh, talking horse. Why, you'll be rich, you'll be famous. Right now, I'll settle for a sack of oats. Yeah, you do need some oats, do you? Where do you get them? Go to Duffy's Feed and Grain store. <laughs> well, they Yeah? They give green stamps. <laughs> Thinking of buying a compact car? Well, then, think big. Look at the Lark by Studebaker, the compact that's big where it counts. Even though the Lark is the shortest of all compacts, inside the Lark loads bigger. Combines larger head, shoulder, hip, and leg room. It's a true six-passenger and comfort car. Like big performance, the Lark's got it two ways, hustling six or doubly powerful V8. Like big proof with no bull, again, the Lark's got it, more than a billion owner-driven miles. Proof that the Lark gives you big savings. Up to 33% on gas, 23% on maintenance. And the Lark has big trade-in value. Visit your Studebaker dealer and you'll find all these big values don't cost a penny more than ordinary compacts. See the compact without compromise. The Lark by Studebaker. Could have sold him the house in the first place. I'm a real estate man, not a psychiatrist. How was I to know this? A man that's mad enough to think that a horse can talk could sell a soul right now there. Oh, Florence. 
carrying his wife across the threshold after being married eight years. That man is really crazy. Hey, Mama! Hey, Mama! The lady next door is coming. Mrs. Pope. <gasps> the crap cost wife. Don't let her hear you. It's not her fault. The poor dear. Hello, Mrs. Crackpole. Oh. <laughs> well, I brought this back. And thanks so much. You really made us feel so welcome, all of you. You know, being new to the neighborhood, we do feel strange, especially Wilbur. Yes, yes, he does seem especially strange. And it was so nice of you inviting us for dinner tonight. Oh, oh, for the dinner. Oh, Mrs. Pope, the, uh, the dinner has been called off. Called off? Yes, I, I know. It does seem very sudden. Well, was someone taken sick? Very sick. Well, that's too bad. Uh, well, I guess I'd better be running along. Thanks again for everything. Oh. Nice knowing you. Yes, it's, uh, it's been nice knowing you. Mom, I broke the door. toward me. Why, they even called off the dinner. I just don't understand it. Just a little mind. The typical jealous, envious neighbor. Just because I happen to have a horse that can talk. Is it jealous, that's all? Wilbur! Oh, no! You didn't tell them about your... your talking horse! Well, I don't... Oh, I knew it was too good to laugh. <laughs> well... Can't possibly stay in a neighborhood where everybody thinks you're a crackpot. Darling, <laughs> the important thing is that you believe me. You're my wife. So for the last time, will you stop being stubborn and come out to that barn and let me prove the horse talk? But I don't want to talk to the horse. I just want to talk to that doctor. <laughs> let go of me. Not until I prove my point. Wilbur! <laughs> Listen to me. You listen to him. All right, Ed. Say something. I don't want to listen to either one of you. But don't just stand there, Ed. Say something. Well? I know why he won't talk. It's because you turned your back on him. He's very sensitive. Now, will you please turn around? Oh, this whole thing is ridiculous. No, please turn around. Well, all right. <gasps> oh, my God. Yeah, I told you he was sensitive. I wouldn't believe that horse could talk if the two of you stood there and sang a duet. <laughs> How could you let me down like that? Why didn't you say something? I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. You were having trouble talking to me. But you're the only one I've ever talked to. But it's utterly fantastic. How can it be? This thing is just bigger than both of us. <laughs> That explains everything. Hey, come on! Come on! Poor boy. Come on! Come on, huh? Come on, huh? I know what you must think when you dragged me out of that barn. <laughs> it was silly of me to think that that horse could talk to you. Oh, Wilbur. Oh, thank goodness you come out of it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. Well, it's true. He can't talk to everybody. Carlotta, that horse can only talk to me. <laughs> oh, no! I'm going to prove he can talk. I'm going down to my office and get my tape recorder. I'll hide it near Ed Stahl and get him to talk to me. And when I play it back, that'll prove something of those doubting Thomases. Yes, sir. Everyone may think I'm crazy, but now I'm going to prove it. <laughs> Rake here so it won't get rusty. <sighs> well, I guess the, uh, the rest of the chores can wait until tomorrow. Well, Ed, I, I thought I'd just drop by and say goodnight to you. Night, Wilbur. 
Oh, by the way, Ed, old horse, 